Welcome all, this is Mr. Pyers. I'm just going to recap the sketch and brainstorming process of our art, op art assignment. Uh, what I'm going to use is a pencil, a ruler, anything else I have handy if I have a compass, but I'm going to use a uh, top to a container for my circle. Uh, when you're planning out ideas, just kind of go with one at a time. I'm going to start doing some stripes of lines that go across. So I'm going to make some marks to kind of keep me on point. Try to do some parallel lines here as I compare each line segment. What I'm trying to do is make lines that get closer together over time than further apart. I'm also going to make some horizontal lines. I can line them up by matching up measurements on my ruler from one side and the other to get perfect horizontals. So I'm doing a checkerboard pattern and again the lines get closer together and then get further apart in some spots. To complete my checkerboard I'm going to shade every other square to create this pattern. I like to work on a diagonal when I do fill-ins. I'm just using a pencil here. And this will just get this concept down for me, see if I like this design, because I might use it later on in uh, part of my assignment. So again, it's kind of pinching in the shapes of the squares to more rectangular forms and they're pinching out. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the, something like circular like this container cover and I'm just going to keep keeping parallel curves bending out to create this movement of close bend curved shape lines to further apart. I'm going to make some other marks. I like to make marks to like know where I'm going to go. I thought I was going to shoot some lines across there with a ruler, but I'm actually going to keep rotating my sphere around because I like these curves. I like these rounded shapes. I'm going to modify that. It almost looks web-like. Again, I'm going to treat it like a checkerboard. I'm going to fill in every other space. thought that would be interesting. It reminds me of part of a hot air balloon or something. But I'm really interested in maybe doing something inside these white spaces. So I'm going to do these off the corners of some of these edges. I'm going to just draw these horizontal lines that cut across. Then I'm going to fill some of those shapes in that I created with just a fill of black with my pencil. Again, spontaneous things will occur and you'll kind of try new things. That's the name of the game when you're trying out ideas. Some ideas are going to stick while other ones won't. And there's extra space there. I thought in the background I'd do these parallel horizontal lines, I mean vertical lines, kind of inspired by the piece next to me. But I'm going to make them be just kind of like these thick bars in the background. Because I wanted to create some interesting space. So now I have this background space with those bars coming through. And I have that foreground space cutting through with that original part of the design. Now I'm going to shoot some lines across here. Again, I'm just using a lot of lines for these designs, and I'm going to create like a movement that's going to remind me of like crinkled paper, like folded paper, or even like buildings, like high-rise buildings with like windows. I'm going to, if, if I do lines on from one angle, I can then counter them with a different angle. to reinforce that look of something bending and turning like folded paper does. I'm going to erase part of that design that I was going to use and I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to try some curved lines. Do a quick fill. I'm going to keep that repetitive fill alternating with my fills where one side had black as a fill, the other side has white. Again, just playing some ideas out, trying those, I like those bars in the background, similar to what I did in my earlier designs. So again, some of my designs are inspiring my next ones, um, and I'm using parts of an older design inside of my new ones. Here I'm going to find the center of the square, I'm going to make an X, and then a plus sign there, break it up into eight sections. And what I'm going to use this for is a template. I'm going to do these curved lines against all these straight lines for a pinwheel effect. Now I'm going to erase these straight lines back 
that will give me a nice clean pinwheel effect. Almost looks like a camera like shutter opening and closing. But inside this shape I made, I'm doing these curved lines. And I'm going to attach these opposite curved lines next to it. Some call these angles like concave and convex, where something looks like it's dipping down and the other side looks like it's curving up. I'm going to keep repeating that. It's going to pull your eye to the center of the design. And whenever you do some, something that goes like to the middle of the drawing like this, it pulls your eye to the middle. Again, almost looks like tunnel-like or web-like. And again, I'm just going to repeat this stuff. It almost has a Beetlejuice or Tim Burton-like look to the pattern. I'm not going to continue this. I'm just going to kind of keep moving on with my designs because you get the gist of how that pattern would lay itself out. So this one, I'm going to do like some... There's two shapes, one on each side to start my design. Cut a line down diagonally. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to go from a straight line in the middle to curved lines on the ends, like a metamorphosis, where something changes over time. So I'm kind of plotting out all these curves to go from straight a straight line to a very circular curved line on the end, almost like a wavelength or like a ripple in a stream. On the other end, instead of doing the same thing, I'm thinking of doing something a little bit different, like these really curvy, squiggly lines. So how do I go from a straight line to that? Well, I'm going to work off of this one, get a little calmer. And on the other side, get a little wilder with the curve. It's like an animation. I'm going to get even a little calmer. Think about waves getting calmer, calmer. And then almost straight right here. Remember that center line I did was straight. So it shows like a movement from one direction to another. My last one here, I'm going to break my square up into four sections, try four different things. So I'm going to start with a checkerboard like grid there, but then start erasing areas out and turn it into uh, more like lattice or something looking like that. It's uh, like a basket weave. Even a little bit of shading there, trying some different things to create background and foreground space where things look a little bit more 3D and overlapping. Kind of like bars overlapping bars there. Next one, I'm going to do something like a, a disco ball with curved, this is a classic effect. And then I'm going to do a checkerboard. Aligning the back, again, just trying to stay with horizontal and verticals. And I'll fill half of this in. Again, every other this part of the design filling in. You can see the different effect when you fill in as opposed to leaving it just blank with lines. This one, I'm going to do an egg-like shape. And I'm going to wrap these straight lines around it and erase part of the egg shape so it looks like almost like hitting a speed bump in the road here with this ribbon that wraps itself around kind of reminds me of like I say a person's laying in bed and they have a they have a, um, a blanket over them you can you know that there's a person there because you can see their form but you don't see like their true body shape you just see this kind of lump <laughs> in the blanket This is just so you guys can see like my process of playing ideas out. I'm definitely inspired by the world around me from one design to the next. And also if I go online, I can look up designs and uh, get some inspiration there and try something that I saw and see if I can get inspired by it or recreate. Like right here, I'm just thinking about like idea of like a triangular spike. And I'm just going to repeat a spike just from different directions. And every time I do a spike, it's going to go behind other spikes I've already created and by them overlapping from different angles there's just this really interesting um, interaction between them all imagine trying to walk through that in a forest or something like thorns or something I could be done here or I can start doing 
some more even tighter information in the background. This, the whole purpose of op art is to fool people's eyes, trick them into seeing things that don't really exist, creating illusions, really making things busy, really complicated looking. Uh, but it's about play, coming up with ideas. So good luck, everybody.